Okay. Hello, friends, and welcome to the Activity Continuous podcast. We are your hosts. I'm Amy. And I'm Megan. We discuss episodes of the Travel Channel's TV show, The Dead Files. And tonight's show is actually the second part of the episode we recorded on April 11th, which was released on April 15th. And that's about the Velisca Axeburger House. It was, it was a doozy. But... So Amy did a little bit more research kind of into the axe murder portion of it. And so that's what this is going to be about. Yes, we ended the last episode just when you were finishing talking about the Dead Files episode. Mm -hmm. And so then we were going to talk about theories and, and, or we did talk about theories and things like that. I talked about the shows that I watched. So all the shows, all the, (laughs) it was really only. Well, it was only three like Discovery Plus shows and then some YouTube stuff, mm-hmm. some silly. YouTube but how many podcasts did she listen to? Uh, podcasts too? Yeah. Four or five. Uh, I didn't make it through all of every one of them. So I just got a few things yeah. and let it go. But anyway, and then we also have Heather's a story. Heather, yes. Heather's paranormal story, which, which, which she spent a night. At the Velisca um, house. Which yeah. still blows my mind. I know. Like, what? She I is, know. she, oh, she has got some cojones on her. Right? Because, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I could never, <clears throat> never in a million years. Yeah. But I'm always scared to do things like that because I don't want something attaching to yep. me coming yeah. home. Yeah. That's my fear. Yeah. I, and it's totally understandable. I, I might do it. I don't know. I'd have to have a few people with me. Yeah. Certainly would. But you, and you don't have the fear that I have. Like if the ghosts that, if what happened to you had happened to me, yep. I would be locked up right now. I would have gone batshit crazy with fear because I just would not be able to handle it. Yeah. But you're just like, fucking leave me alone. <laughs> like, don't shout in my ear, please. It's rude. Yeah, it's really rude. <laughs> I got you a piano. Go fucking play the piano. And then they're like, well, fine. <laughs> oh, geez, she's a bitch. Let's go find someone else to haunt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, we split it into two episodes because we talked for a long time and it was nearly two hours. Yeah. And so we didn't want to put you guys through that. And also we needed to just, we thought it would be nice to take a breather. That was an mm-hmm. emotional episode. So yeah, it yeah. was rough. It, 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 yeah. it was, I mean, it was tough. It was lots of warnings in that episode. Yep. Okay. So the speaking of warnings that you know applies for this week too because we do we did talk about the 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 murders and yeah. the specifics about them. And we have a couple I I at least have a couple little things I want to mention about that stuff, but mm-hmm. before we get into that, we hit 2000 downloads. <gasps> what? When did we do do that? Did yesterday. we do that? Oh yesterday. my god. Oh yeah. my god. Yeah, it was at 1999 for a really long time, and I'm just watching it. I'm like, and then I refreshed, and it was 2001. (laughs) Yeah, it was pretty exciting. That is pretty sweet. Yeah. And Amy Allen's Poshmark store is now up. Uh Uh-huh. Everything is sold except for a couple of two to three hundred dollar items. Yeah, I'm looking at it like every, God, she's, oh, that cute tote sold. I wanted that green sweater. It was a really cute green soft sweater that I I had my eye on, but it was gone. Oh, Salt. yep. There it is. Yeah, really cute. Oh, there's a dress for $175, yep. an anthropology I, dress. Yeah. Medium. Ha! Yeah, yeah, right. I know. One of my thighs, maybe. I, I could wear it on my arm. Yeah. I could drape it over my arm. I could put it over my head and wear it as like a bandana. <laughs> Dang, uh, Amy Allen. Yeah, it's all sold. I know. Amy, what's your secret? <laughs> being Amy Allen and being on TV. I know. <laughs> if only I could be Amy Allen and be on TV, then my life would be golden. Well, yeah. Um, speaking of selling stuff, I signed up for my first craft fair. Yay. Oh That's my so God. exciting. It is, but I'm like, part of me is like super nervous. Like, oh my God, what if I don't sell anything? But then the other part of me is like, okay, well, you'll be out 40 bucks in five hours because yeah. it's in Crystal, Minnesota at the VFW. And so I'm like going into overdrive, you know, trying to make sure I have enough stuff. And because right now I think I've got like 10 or 11 pieces to sell. Mm -hmm. And in all of my crafting groups on Facebook, they're like, you should have at least like 50. 
So, oh, gotta get cracking. Yeah, because it's in two weeks from today. So, nice. but I've got about probably 10 more things behind the computer that I worked on last night that I have to oh. bake. Do you want to show the people what, what it is you're making? Oh, like, sure. So, so can get a little glimpse. So this is going to be an earring and oh, cute. it'll be on like this. Oh, okay. Cute. So this will be on your ear and this will be a dangle. And that hangs. Uh -huh. Yep. And then I did an opposing one, white and red, ah. with a little red dangle. Cute. And then I did some orange and yellow. Your nails look really good, by the way. Thanks. I just got them done because my picking has been off the chart. And really? so this is the only way to stop it. Even with the fidget spinner, I've been doing it and it's still... So then I made these little orange flowers. Cute. They have a little yellow in them. So, and then I made this. Oh, So these cool. are all the earrings. Nice. And then my last one, my last design that I did is like, I tried to do a gray. So yeah. people, if they're not super into color. Yeah. Oh, and then I did butterflies. Oh, cute. And I threw some glitter on them. So. Cool. So, yeah, we'll see. I mean, like I said, worst case scenario, I'm out 40 bucks. So. Oh, that's another thing I want. Oh. We, we do make fun in this episode that you're about to hear. We do make fun a little bit of a certain paranormal investigator. And I just hope that he uh, takes it in stride and doesn't. <laughs> he won't. He won't. Uh, well, you know what? He probably never hears. Hopefully, hear. he doesn't hear it. But probably never hear. It. He doesn't because if, he. If you know him, don't tell him we said. Don't tell him we we said any because yeah, Emma and Christine do it, and he. Has he, he gotten to them? He well, he blocked Christine on all social medias. Oh. She can't reach out to him at all. Oh, funny! His I was just too listening. Fragile. I listened to an episode of them this morning, mm -hmm. and they were doing the Sock Center mm -hmm. uh, in Minnesota, mm -hmm. and they. They were saying some of the same stuff we were. And I was like, did they hear our episode? Because they said something that made it sound like I thought, I was like, wait a minute, did they hear our show? And Em was talking about how they were blocked from all all social media right now. Like, yeah, in, that's what they in said. Instagram jail or yes. something. But they didn't say it had anything to do with, you know, who, but, but maybe it did. I don't know. I don't know. They're just yeah, blocked know, from they, everything. Yeah, they did say that. And I don't know what the, I don't know if they ever found out the reason. Yeah. But, it sounded yeah. to me like they had no idea why. It was crazy because I was listening to that and I was texting patron Amy because mm -hmm. um, she listens to them too. And I was like, oh my God, where have I heard this? And I was like, oh, I did this episode. <laughs> I was like, wow, do I know all these I facts? Know this stuff. <laughs> and then I was like, oh yeah, I did this. And so, and M reference the dead file show when they were guests too so yep. i heard that yeah, yeah. i thought that was i was like oh my god yeah i, I know that um <laughs> want to talk call me we can talk about yeah it. But, em listens to the show i will sh oh, shit my pants yeah right or christine yeah both of them. i love them both yeah i realized when i was listening to this episode that i really i don't think i've heard more than a couple episodes of oh, them i good yeah i do like them and i'm going to their um their live recording May oh. 21st in the oh. Twin Cities. Uh, tickets I bought in February of 2020. I remember um, when you asked me if I wanted to go and I yeah. was like, it's probably going to be downtown. So no. <laughs> yeah. It's at the, um, so Palace. The yep. No. Palace. Pound. Pal Pantages. Pantages. That Pantages. one. Yep, that's it's there. That's a block from where we were when we saw Wine and Crime. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. I'm interested to hear what your theory yeah. is. Yeah. Okay. So my theory is, and part of what made me think this was what happened mm -hmm. is that I read, I read something that said that at the time of the murders mm -hmm. or at the next day or whatever, a woman came forward and said she heard three men discussing 
the murder of the Moore family. They were in the woods, mm -hmm. and three men she heard discussing the murder. And so I think the story of Frank Jones mm -hmm. and his brother hiring Mansfield to do the deed makes sense. Like they knew he was, yeah, you know, a creeper and that it would be that he would probably do it. Right. And Jones, remember, was a senator. Yep. He was very connections. wealthy. Connections, yep. very powerful. And so I think that Frank and Arthur hired William Mansfield mm -hmm. and then they somehow convinced the Reverend to take part too. And Given what I, we know of the Reverend, it probably exactly. didn't take too I, much convincing. I think they knew that he was just a sick fuck that would enjoy torturing people. And so I think that's the four. Mm -hmm. And I think that probably Frank Jones, being as powerful as he was, probably was not one of the ones in right. the woods talking about it. He probably sent his brother to take care of that. Yeah. So that's what I think. Because they, you know, Amy said this was definitely revenge, mm -hmm. anger, mm -hmm. and and that he had power mm -hmm. to be sure that his hitman wasn't going right. to go down for it. Right. And if he can make sure his hitman doesn't go down for it, then he's not going down for it because that means that whole story has been thrown out. Yep. There's no connection to him. Yeah. They probably involved George to be the fall guy. Yeah. I yeah. mean, so he would go down for it. Yeah. And, and, or maybe they thought, well, he's a lunatic and he's probably going to tell 17 different versions of the story right. and they're not going to be able to pin anything on him. And he's going to go back to the mental institution, which is where he wants to be anyway. So mm -hmm. problem solved, win-win. Mm -hmm. It makes sense. I mean, not only, even if we take away the, the rumor that Joe was having an affair with his daughter-in-law. We've got the, you know, he left his employment and took his biggest client. Yep. What does Joe kind of say the main <laughs> reasons for murder? It's money or sex. Yep. And here we have money yep. and sex and potentially. Sex. Yep. 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 So. So, yeah, that's my, my theory. Yeah. Um, I definitely, I, I, you know, Amy said there's four men. Yeah. And she saw it. She literally saw it. Mm -hmm. So. I can't, admit, I don't, I trust her. Yeah. So I did listen to a bunch of podcasts. I didn't, I'll put the, I'll put the list of them in the show notes, but I didn't get a ton of information from them that was any different than mm -hmm. what I got from other places, except for today I listened to My Favorite Murder and they talked uh -huh. about the phone thing. Yeah. And that was oh, new to me. I had not heard that anywhere else. I should listen to that. Their episode covered. Yeah, it was that. a good one. It was a live one though. So I hate live shows because you hear all the people screaming and all that shit bothers me. But <laughs> but it was a kind of really minded. It was a good episode. Yeah. Okay, so guess guess which show I watched first. After, what do you mean? After the Dead Files. I watched other oh shows about paranormal yeah. investigations at the Axe Murder House. Did you watch Ghost Adventures with I Dad absolutely Banger? did. <laughs> I did. <laughs> so that you don't have to. He, okay, I'm going to try. I'm going to try and be nice. Why? Well, yeah, you have, being who it is, you have to be. Because if he gets wind of this. Yeah. One thing I will say is that. You know, I, I've heard. I've seen his show before. And I'm like, <laughs> whatever. So I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm not a I'm not a, a fan. I'm not a person who's watched it a lot. But I always called him Baggins. Like he was some kind of hobbit or something. Isn't that he, his name? It's Baggins. Oh. He pronounces it Baggins. Okay. And I was like, oh, I thought it was Baggins, like Bilbo Baggins. Yeah. Anyway. Like Bilbo Baggins. Yeah. Okay. So he met with Darwin at the Towns Museum. Oh, he met with Darwin. Darwin is also the owner. Yeah, that's Mark and, Lynn's husband. Yep, yep, yep. And it was not mentioned in the show that he was the owner. It was only mentioned that he was the guy that ran the museum. Oh, well. 
But he's the owner. He is the owner. With Martha. With Martha. He passed away in 2011. Yeah. So Darwin showed Zach what he believes to be the actual murder weapon. He has the axe in the museum. He says it's not the one they used for the trial, though, because his story is that the sheriff at the time lost the original axe and bought another one to replace it. <laughs> but he believes that the one he has is the one from. Oh, and why does he believe that? I don't know. I don't know where he got it. He never said like where he found it or how he came about it. But okay. at any rate, you know, from all accounts, Darwin and Martha are lovely people. I So I, I hate to, you know, speak ill of them. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. He, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, so guess who else is in this episode? <gasps> Wait, let me think. Is it John? Johnny Hauser. Johnny John. So he is listed as a resident paranormal expert that lives next door. Like that's what it says under his name on the screen. So he shows Zach around the house and Johnny tells him he thinks there's good and bad energy there. The residual is good, but the bad energy is intelligent. And he believes that something followed him home from the murder house. Now, when did this air? This was in 2010. Okay. So it was before, three years before Amy and Steve went there. He says he's worried about his kids and he's glad that Zach and the team are there to fix it. Oh, huh. So where did three years sound? later. <laughs> that, where does that sound? What so, does that sound like? Yeah. So three years later, he ends up calling Amy and Steve. Yeah. So. He talks to a couple of paranormal investigators, Zach, this is, talks uh -huh. to a couple of paranormal investigators who say they investigated the place in 2009. They used a spirit box, which it has like a, a database. Thing. Yeah, no, it's not the like EVP thing, but it's like it has words in it. So the ghosts can talk it and it comes out as real words. Was it, is it live? Like yeah. they can, yeah, that it, yeah. it makes a weird noise. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's why I was doing that. So they, <laughs> Not just for fun. I thought you just like to do that. <laughs> so they heard they heard the thing say Reverend Kelly when they asked who was there. And then later the box said Legion. But it sounded like the word listen to me. Oh, yeah. And then one guy got claw marks on his back in the shape of an L. They always have claw marks. I know. So he spoke to a couple former residents who lived there when they were kids. They would hear a little girl crying. And once their dad was sharpening his knives and stabbed himself. Oh, yeah. I saw. I actually am looking up to see if Martha Lynn is alive. Uh -huh. And I'm seeing a lot of tourists stab themselves. Oh, that the, was, that's a different Bolivia. guy. Oh, that's a different okay. guy. Yeah. Oh, okay. So this is when, this is a family that lived there. Oh. After, after the murders, before the Lynn spotted. it. Oh, okay. So they did EVPs and they heard one that said, I killed six kids, but it didn't sound like that to me at all. But you know what? EVPs, they never sound like what people say no, they, they sound don't. like. Even if you tell me what I'm supposed to hear, I still don't hear it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they got a little girl saying, let's play. And they got someone else say, or someone saying Lena and another mm -hmm. saying Paul, which are both the child victims names. When they asked who the murderer's name was, they got Andy, which there was a guy named Andy Stoyer who was a, a suspect, mm -hmm. but he was never charged. And so the highlight of this episode for me, uh -huh. so Zach took that ax that he got from Darwin. At Please the, Darwin me. let him let him use it on the walk. Mm -hmm. So Zach lays down on the floor and he props up the axe next to him, Jesus. lays down face up with the axe like right over his head and yells at the ghost to knock it down to his face. He's laying there going, push it down, push it down into my face. So then I also watched Kindred Spirits, mm -hmm. which is Amy Bruni and Adam Berry who were from Ghost Hunters. I always call it Ghostbusters, but it's Ghost Hunters. Which is different than Ghost Adventures. It is. They're, that's a, they're a good team. I mean, I, they've been accused of fudging some stuff too, but anyway, they're okay. Well, everybody's going to accuse ghost people of doing that because they don't believe. Right. 
That's Drake. <laughs> Just kidding. Not That's a good Drake one. <laughs> That's <right. laughs> Although Greg and I used to watch that Ghost Hunter show huh? like religiously. religiously. Yeah. Oh my God, we were both so into it. <laughs> anyway, they had a guy there who yes, they uh, got a guy. They got a guy. I called a man, and his name is John Worley. He's a he's a paranormal investigator. And he had done an investigation in 2017. This show came out in 2019, so it's a little newer. And he thought that somebody had followed him home because he had three deaths in his family after he had investigated this place. And everything and, does happen in threes. Uh -huh. It's true. And he heard a EVP voice say, just kill John Worley. Holy crap. Which is this guy's name. Although, isn't, I thought maybe the rule of three is more Wiccan, isn't it? I don't know. I thought it was more Wiccan. I don't know. I don't know. Are you thinking of whatever you do comes back to you threefold? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, that's yep. Wiccan. Yep, that is Wiccan. Okay. So the thing I thought was kind of interesting about this when I was doing a little bit of the research, the guy named William Mansfield, uh -huh. his, he has an alias of John uh, of George Worley, which is the same last name as this dude. As John. Uh -huh. So I don't know. We'll see. So then this is the guy that stabbed himself. Another mm -hmm. investigator, his name is Buck Larson. He had a stroke. Buck. He had a stroke before the event, so he he has slurred speech, and he yep. looks like he's really, really struggling. And it, yeah. I thought at first that he was just really scared to talk about this stuff, but I think it was the stroke. Yeah. Anyway, he went to the house, and he set up the house to match the crime scene mm -hmm. all over the place. And that was the way he was trying to communicate with the killer. He provoked the spirits. He was not nice. He saw a bunch of orbs, and he realized when he was setting everything up that he didn't have an axe. So he mm -hmm. just had a knife that he held to his chest. And well, after he saw all the orbs, he the next thing he knew, he woke up and he was in the hospital with a stab wound to his chest. Wow. So he had stabbed himself. Mm -hmm. Allegedly. Allegedly. I wrote, this story is hokey and unbelievable. <laughs> but anyway. Do people understand that you can communicate with spirits without being disrespectful and shouting at them? Well. Hang on. Okay, so first of all, guess who else is in this episode? John? Johnny Hauser. <laughs> He's everywhere, man. <laughs> this is in 2019. Let me guess. He invited him there to help him? Well, no, he was brought there by John. They were brought there by John Worley, who oh, thought okay. that the ghost was going to kill him. But he's there. And it says that he lives next door. Mm -hmm. So he stayed there long after the Dead Vows episode. Yeah. But if, you know, like if you said, or as you said, that the stuff in his house cleared up. So mm -hmm. I guess that makes sense. But he says that there is activity here, but it, and it feeds off fear. And he said, most of the stuff comes out of the attic. And he got an EVP saying, I killed them. Well, Amy and Adam do their EDP things and they don't get anything. Mm -hmm. So they decide they're going to provoke. And they don't normally do this, but they were right. like, okay, we're going to provoke because we just, you know, we want to get something. Yeah. So Amy, she gets into this whole thing and she's like, you messing with people has got to stop. That party is over. You can't do that anymore. And then they listen back to the track and the EVP is the ghost saying, fuck you. <laughs> Oh yep. my God. So then they bring in Chip Coffee, who is the <gasps> medium. Oh my God. Christine from And That's Why We Drink was just talking about how much really? she loves Chip He's Coffee. Awesome. He's so yes. awesome. Yes. She was going on, I think it was last week, about how much she loved Chip Coffee. He's awesome. So he said he doesn't feel any of the victims, but he does feel the killer. And he says the killer got off sexually by the murder bacon george yeah george kelly uh the he bacon. Said the, yeah he said the murderer was very calm while he was waiting in the attic for the time to come down and kill them and he says the killer stays there because he likes reliving it oh so then chip did a reading with a swirly guy and assured him that he had nothing to do with the deaths of his family mm -hmm. so then i watched another show called destination fear have you ever oh, watched yeah. that no, because they scare me, but I've heard of it. It's a train wreck. 
in a good way or no. it is very theatrical oh, and the geez. acting is horrible <laughs> but guess who's in this one too is it john it's john oh my god how did i know so this time he's listed as the caretaker i didn't mark down when this one came out it's later though i think it's later i think it's what is it time. called destination fear all right let me see if i can okay. google it while you're on the phone, okay while you're doing your stuff so in his interview he said johnny's interview he said that the reverend said someone handed him an axe and told him to quote unquote slay utterly but the only thing i the only person i could think of who would have handed them that axe would have been arthur or frank jones right people who yeah i believe masterminded it episode aired september 11th 2021 Oh, okay. So real new. Yeah. Okay. Less than a year. Yeah. Wow. So they used a device called the Ovalus. And when they talked to it, when they asked who was there, it said Reverend. Mm -hmm. The brother and sister are sitting in the bedroom at one point and a cat comes in. They hear a cr uh, like a noise and they're all freaked out. And then a cat walks in and they're, they're all freaked out. But then they think that the cat came there to comfort them. And the girl says, is this an angel cat? And that's when I shut it off. No. No. So then, so then I watched this morning, I watched um, this YouTube uh -huh. video. Came out in 2015, so it's a bit older. This one was the one that had kind of questionable production quality, but it had some good info. And they talked to some of the same people that Dead Files people talked to. Sure. Including Johnny Hauser. Mm -hmm. What did I know? Mm -hmm. So let's see. I don't want to get too much into this, but oh, Johnny now in this one says that he believes Mary Peckham, the lady who lived next yeah. door, that she had to have heard the murders happening, but felt like she couldn't do anything about it because she's a single old lady living out by herself and she doesn't have a phone and blah, blah, blah. So he thinks she just waited until morning. To call the police or to have it's funny call. how his ideas change every single time yeah. you talk to him yeah it kind of sounds like they do apparently she went to a funeral out of town shortly after the murder and died of a nervous breakdown wow so yeah he believes that she knew what happened but didn't feel like she could intervene and he said every time another team comes in it gets worse he does believe that the evps are valid but of course whoever does. is in the house is messing with them so that's why it says Andy or the oh, Reverend yeah, or whatever. Yeah. It's just fucking with him because it likes to. So here I was comparing what we saw in the dead files versus what I found. That ghost that the little four-year-old girl sees upstairs, Hattie. Hattie. She doesn't seem to be involved in the no. murders, but there are a lot of people lived there after, you know, in that 110 mm -hmm. years. Mm-hmm. I think that um, she could have been somebody who lived there, you know, unrelated mm -hmm. to the to the Moore family. Mm -hmm. So, let's see. Oh, the part where Amy says that she heard Sarah say, how could you let this happen? Aren't they your friends? That just backs it up for me that it was the Joneses. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. oh, and fun fact. Velisca either means pretty view or evil spirit, depending on who you ask. I think we could all agree what it means when they ask us. Okay, so here, are you ready for Heather's story? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh -huh. Okay, so do you have your computer up so you can look at the pictures if you need to? Yes. Hang on, I have to get you, what you shared with me. Oh, here we go. Okay, wait. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let me open it up okay. here. All right, ready, set, go. I'm going to do my KIV in a second here. Who's that? I'm not going to sign any bills. I'm just going to burn. Oh, okay, oh, okay. What? What? I Megan don't, would be looking at the pictures right now. Megan is looking and losing her fucking mind. <laughs> it's getting late. We probably shouldn't have done this. Yeah, we did maybe, not plan this one. Well. Maybe this should be a two-parter. We can no. maybe cut this one in two. We're, you're here now. Listening. I know, I know. We'll keep going. But yeah. when I edit it, I'll cut it in two. So okay. we can, then we can take a week off. Cut it out. <laughs> Sorry, it's been a while since I did Oh my that. god, I know you were gonna do that every episode. I oh, totally... look, I get you. Okay. I don't like these. So this is from Heather, our patron, who sent us this story. 
Okay. We visited the house in June 2004, so 18 years ago now. At that time, there was no barn near the house. Some years later, they built a barn to give people a modern place to use the restroom. Nor the big white sign announcing the house. Oh, the house, for sure. The house had absolutely no electricity, running water, or utilities of any sort. There was no big electricity pole or lines near the house either. We were given one non-electric lamp to use in the living room. I can't remember now if it was oil or not, but oil seems like a risky thing since the house was precious and fires can happen. Easily. And wood, I think. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, the whole place is wood, I think. The owners at the time were very nice. The husband gave us a tour of the house before leaving us for the night. The website at the time didn't have near the information it has now and only gave a very basic background of the family and what happened. We decided not to research about the house or experiences in advance of our visit because we wanted to go in without being jaded. Mm -hmm. We had a tour in the early evening, so full daylight, which ended before sundown. As a group, we agreed we would not antagonize the spirits at all, and we would do our best to kindly interact with them, especially Good. the children. Good we job, Heather. I you know. love this. Right? We only had cameras. One was digital and one was disposable and one personal digital recording device to capture anything that night. Children, for those listening, a disposable camera is a camera that <laughs> you bought from the drugstore. That's right. And you couldn't, you didn't know what the pictures were going to look like. Yep. You had to wait until they were developed. Yep. It was preloaded with film inside. You couldn't take yep. the film out or anything. You, you just took, you used the camera, you took the pictures and you and gave the whole camera. The best. Yep. You get the they whole had envelopes you would put them in and yep. you would fill out your name and your phone number. Yep. And they'd call you when your pictures were developed. And it would be days later. So days. That, sometimes weeks if they were busy. Anticipation. <gasps> oh, dear. Okay. Anyway, she said our pictures didn't really pick up too much except orbs, which I knew are controversial. Mm -hmm. There's one orb in particular, however, that seemed odd because of its location and nothing else around it. Not a single other orb. Considering we typically say orbs are just dust or reflections right. of moisture, rain, bugs, this one doesn't seem to fit, and it's big. Mm -hmm. We did record during the night at various times. At one point, we left the digital recorder in the attic for a couple of hours. My husband put it there. No way I was going to do it. Smart. Uh-huh. However, oh, man. listen to this. However, I've never listened to it. <gasps> Heather! I know. She said, based on my personal experiences, I'm too scared to listen to it. I get that. I believe we still have the audio on one of our computers, but I'm not sure about it. And oh I God, send it in. Send it to send me. it. She in. said she's gonna look for it. If she if she can find it, we'll have well. Okay, we're we'll gonna need to, to listen to it at noon on a Wednesday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I these are the hold my stuffed animal. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I forgot. I should have burned. I forgot to light my oh, white candle. I forgot candle. my candle too. Yeah. Damn it. Oh well. So things that happened. Number one. Our flashlights and cameras kept losing battery power and sometimes very quickly. Mm -hmm. What was weirder is that our battery power would be back to normal once we went outside for a few minutes. It happened to all of us on a variety of our equipment. So did they spend the night there? Yeah. Oh, Heather, you're so brave. I know, right? Oh my God. We all had made sure the batteries in our flashlights and cameras were new. We had brought extra batteries because we knew there were no utilities there. She said, side note, in 2004, there were no smartphones like we have now. We had the older flip phones or Nokia types, and we didn't even use them that night. Number two. During it's a different world back then. I know. During the tour by the owner, we were in the living room. I sat down on a chair that was in the corner of the room, as we were told by the family. All of a sudden, I was completely overwhelmed by a wave of sadness and despair. She said, lack of words to really describe the feelings. I started okay. tearing up and tears ran down my face. And I could not control it. I've had a couple other experiences in my life, but nothing like this ever. Wow. I bet that was Sarah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, probably. I mean, or one of the kids. Who knows? Or one of the kids. Yeah. Or Joe. I mean, honestly, any could have been anyone, right? So then I stood up Heather. and I apologized as I got a tissue from my friend. The owner said, no apology is necessary. It seems that happens to a lot of people and mostly women who sit or stand in that corner of the room. Heather. And I wondered if that was the corner where Amy saw 
Sarah and the kid. You know how she said she saw Sarah cradling a Crouchy. child? Yeah. Yeah. She said, I think that may have been the mother's favorite spot to sit in the room so it could be her I was feeling. I'm telling you, it was such an unbelievable sadness. My next personal experience occurred during the tour as we went upstairs. Keep in mind, we knew nothing of the setup of the house, how big or, as we found out, small it is. The parents' bedroom is right at the top of the stairs, and to the left at the top of the stairs is a door. During the owner telling us about the parents' death, I noticed the door and figured it was a closet. Next, the owner opened the door, and I realized it was the attic. The owner went ahead into the attic, and my, some of my group went in as well. I was one of the last ones to step into it. Again, all of a sudden got hit by a huge wave of what I can only describe as feeling bad vibes, danger, evil. Felt that before, Heather. Felt that. It just hits you, and it's like it just envelops your whole body. It's like your fight or flight it uh, kicks in. It's very scary. She said, my stomach dropped and I literally felt queasy. Yep. I quickly turned around and left, not having even walked into the attic more than two steps. My husband and one of our friends hadn't even entered the attic yet, so they went around, for, or they went around me to enter the room. I told them there's no way I was going to stand in that room for any amount of time. I again apologized to the owner and told him what I had just felt. Yes, left, Heather, go with your gut. Exactly. Yep. yep. We left the door to the attic open so I could hear him continue the tour, and he stated that the theory that the killer or killers hid in the attic waiting for the family to go to sleep before murdering them. This made complete sense to me based on what I felt when I entered the attic. I never went into that attic for the rest of our stay. Never. Mm -mm. Trust it, girl. Trust it. Uh-huh. She said, at one point, we all took a walk down to the cemetery to take pictures and get fresh air. It was nice outside. It had just rained a little bit. When we all got back to the house, we noticed that in the kitchen, all of the chairs were pulled away from the table. I know for a fact they were all pushed in when we left. We had a key to the house and we locked up before going. It's possible the owner saw us leave and did it, but I can't, as I can't disprove that. Still, it was definitely freaky seeing that. I mean, I, knowing... What I do about those owners, I don't think they would do that. Mm -mm. It doesn't sound like they ever wanted to make money off of no. the paranormal aspect of it. No, it sounds like they didn't even believe in the paranormal aspect of it. Yeah. At least Martha didn't. Yeah. The owner had told us that they think the murders occurred when the train went by at like 1.45 a.m. Oh. He told us some people have said they've seen a mist upstairs in the parents' bedroom at around that time. So me and my husband and one of our friends decided we'd stay up all night and watch for anything. While the other three slept downstairs in the living room, we played cards in the kids' room for quite some time. Dan, my husband, and our friend were facing me so I could see them fully. I was sitting cross-legged, and all of a sudden I felt a tapping at the bottom of my tennis shoe. I jumped a bit and said, woo! The guys were like, what's wrong? I said I just felt a hard knocking at the bottom of my shoe. No one else had seen anything or heard anything. I can still feel it on my left foot if I stop to think about it. Oh, my God. Heather, you are braver <laughs> than me. I know. I Sorry. would have. I went to. Oh, my God. You got some girl. You're brave. <laughs> All right. During the evening, during the evening, my friend Jen and I decided to go to the guest room on the main floor where the two still injured girls had been sleeping. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jen had brought children's books and toys along with her to try interacting with the kids. Mm -hmm. As we entered the room, Jen and I both saw a shadow in the corner near the closet. However, it wasn't like a normal shadow. Yeah. It was black and blocked the view of what was behind it. Shadow like we person. were talking before, shadows you can see through. Yeah, yep. However, it quickly disappeared as we entered the room. It happened so fast. We both looked at each other and Jen asked if I'd seen that. I confirmed I did. I was nervous about being in the room after that, but I stayed positive, hoping it was either the kids or just our imaginations. We sat on the bed and decided to try recording EVPs. We read the kids a story and decided to leave the toys that Jen brought in the room, including a small ball. The next day after Jen got home, she called me. She asked me if I'd put the ball back in her bag. I said I never went back into that room the rest of the time we were there. Everyone says they never put the toys back in her bag, but somehow the ball went home with Jen. I don't like that. 
She said, that's all I personally experienced at the house. I do believe it's that's all. That's all. <laughs> no, that's a lot. That's a lot. It is. That's all. She said, I do believe it's haunted and most definitely filled with residual energy. I've included some pictures from that night, including the large orb over the house. I personally have never had another photo with an orb like that in it. And she said, don't you oh, think the outside, yeah. she said, don't you think the outside windows of the attic look like another certain famously haunted house? <laughs> it does look a little like the Amityville Horror House. Yes, it does. By the chimney. Yep. Yep. And she said those stairs are super narrow and super steep. And on first glance, the reason why I gasped so much is it looks like blood on the stairs. Oh, I know yeah. it's the paint yep. chipping, but it looked a lot like blood splatter. It does. Yep. Spatter. Sorry, Lucy. <laughs> Who's Lucy? Sure Lucy from Wine and Crime. She talks about blood spatter versus oh, splatter. Yes, I do remember word. her getting upset when people say splatter. Yes, so I apologize, Lucy. Because I, I know she, she was listening. Yep. Yep. I mean, I'm a patron of them. They could be a patron of us too. They should be. She said, I was born and raised in Iowa, and about six years ago, we moved from Iowa to the haunted area that is Southeast Louisiana swamps, <gasps> about 70 minute drive more west than south of New Orleans. Also, I've had a couple other experiences when I was younger. So, as my mom and actually my parents had some incidents in our old house in Des Moines, Iowa, I'll send you those sometime too. Girl, please send them. Yeah. Also, have you ever met Jason Momoa? Because he's from Des Moines. Is he really? Des Moines. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Cool. If you've met him, please introduce me. I'll get divorced for him. <laughs> Listen, John will understand. I'm sure he will. All right. Holy so crap. That's what I got. That's a lot. That should, yeah, we definitely need to do a two-parter for this Yeah, I one. think we need to, we're going to have to cut this into two. Well, well, this was a really emotional one. It was. Um, it was tough. It was really tough. a little bit of white cloud I, left. I don't have any left. It was, I didn't know I was going to cry. Sorry about that. But it was. Don't be sorry. It's tough. It's tough to be, when she said, you know, cradling that baby, I just. Yep. I yeah, the, the part for me was Lena, knowing her murder and fighting him and all that that's the worst for me and there's more to that but i won't i won't say it i understand if if amy doesn't have children because she chose to i understand completely yeah yeah, yeah. yikes it's tough that it was tough this was a brutal one this was uh, this was bad mm -hmm. but you know they they deserve to have their story told yeah and they, and they deserve, want to so they want it and they deserve the respect and and I hope I hope that they can find peace to have died that way and you know like we said those kids they knew them mm -hmm. it's just awful they deserved I, I wish I wish that if any of the victims spirits are there that they could tell somebody yeah who did it yeah just let them just tell I mean maybe that's all they need Maybe, you know, a medium or somebody could go there and just communicate with them. Yeah. And and they can tell them who did it. And maybe they would be at peace mm -hmm. then and they could move on and yeah. rest and be together and, and not be so tormented and, yeah. and reliving it. Like Amy said, they relive it constantly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <sighs> it's a tough one. All right, we're going to have to watch some cute kitty videos or something before going to bed. Lord, I have to go on TikTok. That's what I'm going yeah, to do. Yeah, I probably will too. All right, well, everybody, thank you right. so much. This was this lacked our normal comedic relief, but <laughs> I feel like we needed, for this case, I, I feel like yeah. we shouldn't have had the comedic relief. We needed yeah. to respect it. Yeah. Not that we don't respect all the other cases. We do, but... yeah. So anyways. some are just easier to make jokes about. They are, yeah. It's room yeah. Tap, tap. So and we don't make jokes about the the dead people. Right. We make jokes about the people alive. Right. So well, thank right. you everybody. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for so listening. Much. Have a great night or day yeah. or whenever you're listening to this. Whenever you're listening. Hopefully it's in the daytime so you can go to sleep tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Unlike us. <laughs> <laughs> Hi friends, Amy here. 
This part you're about to hear was recorded April 16th, the same day we recorded the intro for this episode. But as I was editing it, I realized that we were talking about things that you wouldn't have heard yet if you hadn't heard this second half of the episode. So I'm tacking it on here at the end instead of in the intro. Enjoy. Okay, so you you know who Bailey Sarian is, right? Oh, I love her. I yeah. love her. I listen I to her podcast. Yeah. So if you don't, <clears throat> people don't know who she is, she is a vlogger. She has a YouTube mm-hmm. channel and she talks about true crime stories while she puts on yep. her makeup. It's called Murder and Makeup Mondays, I think. Yep. yep. And she, she is another one too. So freaking talented. I know. The stuff she does with makeup. I know. I'm barely able to put foundation on with a brush. I, currently, I am wearing tinted lip gloss. That's it. I can't. Everyone, I can't do anything else. <laughs> okay, but to be, in my defense, I literally haven't showered. I mean, my hair. That's why it's up in a ponytail because she's a little greasy. So it's been a few days. <laughs> but are you even a mom if you don't remember when you showered? <laughs> right. Right. You have ev- every excuse. I I don't, but I still oh, I still don't do it every day. You're a dog mom. Same thing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have to sleep when they sleep, though. True. If I did, I'd be Rip Van Winkle because they sleep all the time. Oh, the dream. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Anyway, back to Bailey. So Bailey did the axe murder, the Melissa Melissa yeah, axe oh, murder. Right, yeah. And she did. She did a lot of research, and she researched the town history and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But and she even like gave the layout of the house. Like she's like, you walk in the door and you turn it over here. Oh, and you see that. Damn, oh, Bailey. Yeah, she did a really good job. But one thing I wanted to make sure to tell you, uh-huh. she said her research showed that Sarah is the one that got the blade end of the axe, and not Josiah. But she. But did. everything you've done, has everything said I Josiah. did, everything I saw except for. Anything that that same guy, Epperly, Edgar Epperly, who was oh, in, yep. in the episode. Was in mine? Yep. yep. And he's the one that said that was he in the, the episode. Yeah. He, uh, yeah he's well, the historian. He's written yeah. a book and all that. He's been studying them since 1955. He's like, he knows, he knows this stuff. I haven't even met, neither of us have been alive that long. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I really torn. I don't know. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how we're ever going to find out. Right. Because other people who say they've studied it forever say that it was Josiah. It was Josiah. Yeah. So I don't know. I think I just, w- w- it's just safe to say one of them yeah. was the only one who yeah. got hit with the blade. And you know what? How do they, how can you even really tell? Because, I mean, <laughs> either I, way, I, either my, way, your skin is going to split. Right. My thought process would be if they hit, if they got hit with the back, this is going to get real gruesome. Their, their head would be more bashed in and maybe more cracked and oh, more yeah. versus the As blade. It would just be cuts. Mm-hmm. But I, I'm literally, I'm no idea. No, so. I think you're right. I think you're right. Because one of the shows I watched was, I want to say Sam and Cody. Mm-hmm. These, these two little like. I should say little. They're they're young men, young <laughs> boys, whatever. They reminded me of Justin Bieber, and um, oh, okay. I was I was calling him the Biebers when I was watching it. The young whippersnappers, young whippersnappers. <laughs> um, they're cute, and yeah. they go to different haunted places. And they went to the expert mm-hmm. house, and Johnny Kowser was in that one too. Of course he was, and he, you know, because this one was. This one was more of a, it was well done and everything, but it wasn't on TV. It was a yeah. YouTube channel. Yeah. So he was allowed to like, he wasn't edited, I don't think. And so he was a little bit more forthcoming with some of the things that he talked about huh. and some of the things that he saw. And one thing he said. This was Johnny? Johnny. Yeah. Yeah. And one thing he said was that they have never advertised the paranormal aspect of this house and he said even all the tv shows we've been on that's them calling us which he goes called, after- even steve was like so why did you call us in yeah he is so, such a liar so i think i don't think that's true i don't trust one word that comes out of that guy's mouth yeah 
You don't advertise the bullshit. Yeah. And this was a 2021 video. So this is just bullshit. Last year. I call baloney on that. Yeah. I, I do too. Anyway, on Bailey's YouTube, I was reading the comments, which I know, never read the comments. Never read the they comments. They were good. Everybody was nice to her. Okay. Everybody was good uh, that I saw. But one thing that it said was that, and I don't know how this person knows this, or maybe they just made it up, but it was an interesting theory, I thought, that Sarah, the mother, had mm -hmm. invited the reverend to stay with them that evening. So he was already a house guest. Really? So he was already in the house. And do you remember in the Dead Files episode, Amy said that Sarah kept saying, it's my fault because I let somebody in yep. or I let somebody stay. Mm -hmm. <gasps> yeah. So that could that, be. That ties together. Yep. That could be. Oh, I hope they, I know I said this last week, but I really hope this family can find some peace. Oh, I know. I know. I just hope so well, hard. And, and when, when, uh, I think it was Kindred Spirits. Yeah. <laughs> when, when Chip Coffee was on and he was talking, I love him. He, he said he didn't sense any victims. He only sensed the murderer when he was there. Good. So maybe they've, I hope, maybe they've I hope done they've since on. the dead files were there. I really hope so. Yeah, because I hope so. Ugh, it's awful. So sad. It's, yeah. Yeah. So that's, Dang. I think, uh, I did find some other stuff, but I can't find my notes right now. I don't know what I did with them. I probably wrote them down on my racket and then mm -hmm. deleted it. Let me see, actually. Oh, yeah. Oh, these are my notes from the, the little Biebers. Um, it was called Our Haunted Night at the Velisca Axe Murder House. I'll put a link in the episode notes and or the blog. Post. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Words are hard today, you guys. You know, for honest. My God, I'm not even hungover. No. Um, it's 1.30 in the afternoon. <laughs> like, when neither of us is drinking. <laughs> no, nope, so. not drinking. It's just, just water. Are you sure that's water? Is I'm sure that's water. It's actually water. Yes. It's, it, no, it's water from last night, actually. Okay. No, it's not. I did fill it this morning. I still have that drinking problem, though. Anyway. Yeah, I wrote, a group of Biebers are planning to spend the night in the house. <laughs> So they meet Johnny, and he's wearing a shirt that says Sons of Silence MC. I didn't Google it. I should have, but I didn't. I'm pretty sure Sons of Silence is a motorcycle gang. Yep, MC Motorcycle Club. Oh, okay. Okay. Yep. So I don't know if he's in it or he just bought the t-shirt. I don't know. He did say that they are booked out a year in advance for people staying overnight. But they don't advertise. But they don't advertise. Right, um, right, 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 right. Yeah, they've never advertised. All word of mouth. Every TV show is them calling us. And I wrote, sure, Jan. Yeah, really. Remember I told you about the Destination Fear episode as much as I could stand to watch yep. it? Because so that's the, is that the two siblings? Yeah. 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 And yep. remember I told you that cat jumped in there? Mm -hmm. And they were all freaking out about the cat. And then they were like, oh, maybe it's an angel cat. <laughs> um, right. Yeah. The cat showed up on in this video too. And the cat just lives on the premises and just wanders around and goes in the house whenever he wants to and stuff. And his name is Church. Mm -hmm. So he was there too. And he was freaking out the guys. They were like, that cat's freaking me out. Because every time they'd turn around, the cat would be staring at him from outside, like through the window or something. Mm -hmm. Every time they go in another room, there's the cat staring at him. That's what the cat does though. <laughs> That's what cats do. I know. But what if the cat was really the killer? I don't mean that the cat, the, a cat killed those people, but I yeah. mean, what if the reverend or whoever like being it's in the hocus pocus in the cat yeah oh yeah Ooh. i don't know so this is interesting something that johnny said he said spending a lot of time in that house can make you feel like you're half drunk mm -hmm. and then he says when you leave it takes a few hours for that feeling to go away and to feel normal again he calls it a paranormal hangover excuse me i have to pluck my eyes from inside my head because they rolled so far back <laughs> I, I thought it was kind of clever. No, don't give him any credit. Oh, he's, he's I, a, you know, after watching him on 1700 shows, I kind of like him. No, Amy, I I've lost you. We, I'm sorry. I still feel the same way about, you know, who, but that too. Okay, okay. back on track. Yeah. Okay, back on track. So Epperly, the one who said that Sarah got scared, Sarah. He, he. <gasps> oh my God. What if that's where that saying came from? They got what? the axe. Is that where that saying comes from? Well, you know, it probably comes from 
axe murders, but not yeah. necessarily this one. But sorry. Anyways, done. I'm done. I'm done talking. You... Please don't be done talking. We both know I'm not done talking. No, Come that's on. not going to happen. <laughs> so they, he talked about how he thinks that the axe was being swung around over their over mm -hmm. the killer was swinging the axe over his head because there were axe marks in the ceiling, like from lifting it yeah, up. Yeah, I don't know if he. I think he was just so emotional and by that i mean like enraged or whatever emotion yeah. the killer was feeling he was just really yeah bam, yeah like lifting it all the way up and just as far back as he could go yeah because he had the back of the back wall too i think that's yeah. what it was i don't think he was waving it around i think he was just so enraged yeah that that's what he was doing yep yep i think so too they asked john johnny what the scariest place he's ever been is and he said the Sally House, which I just listened to an episode about the Sally House. I can't remember which podcast it is now because I'm getting them all jumbled up in my head. Right. But it sounded really scary. And then the guys, the Beavers, freaked out because that's where they're going next. So mm -hmm. that'll be a fun one to watch too. Also, another thing that was interesting in this one that I didn't hear before was that there was some kind of a fracas going on with the power company versus the people of the town. And that night, the the power company shut off all the streetlights. So that would be why people didn't see what was going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I started to think, I wonder who would have the power to tell the town to shut off all the streetlights. And I get sent all the way back to Frank Jones again. Mm -hmm. I still think he's behind us. Yeah. Yep. I do. Okay. So the Sally house is considered one of the most, if not the most haunted houses in America. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like I saw a show about this. I think it might've been Unexplained Mysteries where they talked about the Sally house because it's super haunted. Oh, yeah. you know what? I think it's actually BuzzFeed's Unsolved. They had two different, one is paranormal like supernatural and other is murders and i think they went to the sally house in their supernatural with shane and ryan and i love them so much but okay. i think they did and it was it's a super haunted house and i don't know i know i've derailed this again i'm so sorry but is do we know do you think this is the sally house the one that's considered to have demons in it or is it just super duper haunted i don't know i because I, I know there's a house that's considered to be totally like taken over by demons. Really? Yeah. I'm gonna have to do some research on that. It's not Demon House, is it? Where Zach Baggins went and his organs shut down? I don't think it's that. That's a it's a documentary called Demon House. I watched it and I was like, okay now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. All of his organs shut down. Anyway, moving on. Yeah, they the killer was left handed. Really? Mm -hmm. How do they know that? I don't know. <laughs> okay. But uh, Reverend Kelly was also left-handed. Really? Uh -huh. Johnny believes it was the Reverend. Oh, well, if Johnny believes it, yeah, shit. I know. Word of God. So. Oh, we're just being mean today. I don't, I don't like Johnny. I'm sorry. I, I kind of do. I know you do. It's I okay. Do. You're, it's okay. I, we're both allowed to, that's the thing that makes our friendship great is we can have different <laughs> opinions and not hate each other. That's right. That's right. That's kind of rare, actually. Okay. So is there anything else you want to get, get out before we uh, let them listen to the episode? I think I'm good. Okay. Well, friends, enjoy the episode and we will see you next week when Megan is going to uh, do a recap of- yes. An episode. Do you know which one yet? No. Okay. But, and we should say we're kind of changing up the format of our episodes from now yeah. on. Amy brought up a good point that it might be too, too much for listeners for us each to recap. So we're going to alternate and I'll recap and then Amy will react and then vice versa. So yep. next week is my turn um, yep. to recap. So I got to figure out an episode to do. And if you, uh -huh. if you end up picking one that has a true crime aspect, um, maybe I'll dig into that a little bit. 
and have Amy something to say. has suggested doing the Lizzie Borden house, oh. which I don't know if I'm ready for that after the Velisca Axe. Murder. Yeah, maybe we should hold off on Axis for a little bit, but that's a good one. We should definitely do that. Yeah, she said the episode was really good. Mm -hmm. It was. And she's, she thinks that if Amy, TV show Amy, found a, a Ouija board under one of the beds in that episode, oh, she, yep. she can't remember if it's that one or another. Somebody did. I don't remember if it was Amy or if it was like, goes to adventures or yeah. something else but so yeah i remember somebody did find it find one oh. under there this these uh i think sam and cody are their names the the beavers i was talking about mm -hmm. one of the guys that's in their group is a relative of lizzie borden get out they're cute guys i i shouldn't i i don't mean to disparage them by calling no. them beavers but they just a group of beavers you know they have the, the squirrely hair and yeah 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 you know. sounds good okay all right bye bye The Activity Continues podcast is produced by me, Amy, at Collected Sounds Media and is a part of the independent Collected Sounds podcast network. Nailed it. <laughs>